Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and uh, daily popping in with uh, important stories. Our historian, geopolitical, military analyst, also posting up reports again soon on our live stream TV channel. Tim Alexander, I should say Professor Tim or Lord Sterling, <laughs> if you want to use your fancy titles. And yeah, we have yeah. some we have some really, uh, as I say, I have the bad news, the really bad news, and then I get the stuff that you really don't want to open up, the can of worms news. And uh, let's open that can of worms. We have the geopolitical can opener in your right hand, uh, uh, well, Professor yeah, the Tim. Ukrainian, yeah, the Ukrainian crisis continues to, uh, to, to expand. Uh, Russia today has said that uh, the situation in Ukraine, uh, they saw it as an attempted coup. Um, and um, they said that today. And they said that Moscow has illegal grounds to intervene in the country's crisis. Right. So, uh, and I, this is what I've been pointing to as a possible outcome. And the longer this thing drags on, the greater the likelihood of a Russian military intervention and a EU NATO military intervention. And I don't believe that Russia will back down over the Ukraine because the Ukraine was part of Russia, the Russian Empire, for 500 years. Well, and that a large part of the population is Russian, at least a third of the population. What's going to happen, and this is my prediction, is this year, here's what I call, I'm not going to lay out dates, we're, we're heading toward the second and third quarter, and I independently said the exact same things as Gerald Salente, who I consider the best financial analyst out there now, uh, is that second or third quarter we're going to have a bank holiday. We're going to have a, uh, a collapse of Fukushima Daiichi with an earthquake or just an accident for moving the fuel rods. So massive radiation release, evacuation of Tokyo from people getting acute radiation sickness despite the Abe government trying to suppress it. We're going to have a bank run because the interest rates in Russia, which dropped the ruble, I think almost 15% or more since January 1st, because the flight of capital from India, Turkey, uh, all these different nations, the BRICS nations, what's going to happen is we're heading toward economic chaos this year. We're also seeing that uh, Russia is basically totally fed up with uh, Syria being excluded from discussions about Iran and Iran being excluded, excluded from discussions of Syria. And now they're trying to criticize the, uh, the, uh, the Bashar al-Assad government from using barrel bombs against terrorists. These terrorists are funded by us, by Qatar and Saudi Arabia and the Europeans and uh, Turkey. And the situation to me is, is just a hair's breadth away from a thermonuclear, biological and chemical war. If there isn't a peace treaty this year, which I think is a prelude to the false peace, that's prophesied in the Bible and the mark of the beast and the actual seven years of Jacob's trouble, all these things in the blood moons we discussed yesterday with Mark Biltz, we're there. And I'm not going to set dates, but I can tell you we are not years away from disaster. We're months. We're not years now. We're yeah, months. You, we, we've been uh, talking about uh, this for several years, and you could see this giant iceberg on the horizon, and we kept keeping closer and closer. And a few months ago, we were talking about we could smell it. Well, we're on top of it now. And uh, it, you know, when you you're an analyst like I, what you do is you look for patterns, and the patterns are flashing red neon lights, all pointing in the same direction. Uh, yeah. Armageddon, World War Three, total economic collapse, uh, police state, uh, new world order, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and. Uh, I don't want to come up uh, with that uh, uh, analysis. Uh, that's a scary one. I live on this planet, too, you know, and I'd, I'd rather things be nice and rosy. But I don't see it happening. Right. Uh, you know, uh, we, they, we just had a hacked phone call uh, in the Ukrainian crisis today. Uh, they, uh, Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland uh, was overheard, and um, she uh, basically, uh, they were saying, uh, they were talking about America's strategy on how to work with Ukraine's main opposition leaders. Right. And, uh, 
we are creating the crisis in the Ukraine. We are exploiting the crisis in the Ukraine. We are funding the rioting. And the Russians have been very patient. But this is an attempt by the globalists to push and push and push Russia, China, and, and the countries that are aligned with them into a state of really third world war. And well, I think that when the, when, the, when the Abbey government gets more unstable because of the collapse of Fukushima and they have to migrate and, and evacuate up to 50 million people out of northern Japan and Honshu, that makes them far more unstable. Right now, in terms of military armaments, if China and Russia go at it, Japan will, will, will snap and will crush China in a heart speed in half an hour. People don't understand exactly how advanced Japan's uh, military machine is and how the attitudes of the shoguns has never disappeared of Imperial Japan. No, no, uh, it hasn't. It, uh, and and I, I, you know, I, a, a friend of mine is a baron uh, in China, uh, Japan. They don't use their titles in public, but that whole culture has not exactly disappeared. Not uh, at all. On it's, the it's, surface, it's a, it has, but it's, uh, it's gone underground. And by the way, the same corporate executives that run all the corporations in Japan are the same shoguns and royal families going back millennia. So the idea that the Imperial Japan has disappeared is a bold-faced lie, just like the lie that the Soviet Union disappeared. The Soviet Union basically was bankrupted by Western bankers by, by subterfuge, and the Russians are really ticked off about it, and they're going to do something about it. And I think that we're that the West, so only solution now is an authentication currency, otherwise in the Bible known as Mark of the Beast. Once this financial order is ended, this year or next, we're going to be forced with the biometric authentication currency. Last year, May, it was supposed to be uh, a worker's biometric ID trackable by May of 2013. That's now delayed to four months from now, four. Four months from now, May of this year, we're all supposed to have an ID, and it's tied directly to the uh, the push toward amnesty, which even Boehner, this idiot Boehner, is pushing along with the Obama administration. It means every American needs to have a trackable biometric ID in order to be able to work. And this is part of their scheme because they want to move all currency away from gold and silver, or even barter. It's all going to be illegal. And is right in Patriot Act one? They want move all currencies in all countries toward biometric authentication. And if they control your cybernetic uh, icon, your node, they've got control of you. That's called the mark of the beast, and it's coming real fast. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. And I, I think in the United States, to facilitate it, we will have a, it may be presented as a naturally occurring pandemic. Or oh, yeah. It may be, yeah, it may be yeah. presented as a, a bio war attack by terrorists. Well, those are... So those will all be just kind of what call folk, folkum things. They just need a bond run. They need something as simple as Japan needing to, to uh, evacuate, say, 15 million out of their 50 well, million people in northern will Japan. Well, the global economy. Right, but uh, they don't even need all these other things. These other things are kind of distractions, almost like Justin Bieber. It's the, the flu, even if it kills 100 million people, that's like a blip on the, on the, on the screen is to distract people. Well, press the digitation. What's happening in my right hand while well, my left hand is doing this to screw up your banking system and steal your money and bail it all in yeah, while they're... Yeah, you're, you're totally right, but but also beyond, there's something else beyond that. It's evil. It hurts people. Yeah. It kills people. It causes illness. It causes hurt. Can you imagine all the people that have suffered because they don't have any money. They can't get a job or the only job they can get is at Wally World or Mickey D's uh, for seven or eight or nine bucks an hour. Try to raise a family on nine bucks an hour uh, in 2014. It doesn't work. Try well, that's to what we ten dollars an hour if you if you're lucky enough to have a, t a forty hour a week job, four hundred dollars mm. a week uh, before taxes. Well, good luck to you. And how well, about I, insurance? I, I, I mean, uh, Obamacare is nothing but a very overpriced. Uh, uh, catastrophic okay. insurance with a enormous a number of deductions. So you've got all these people who are barely, and I mean barely, hanging on. And Obamacare, well, let's see, uh, you're going to have to pay uh, $10,000 out of your pocket or $6,200 out of your pocket the first time you go to the hospital. Or anything That's ridiculous. Wrong. Who has that yeah. kind of money? It's not doable.
before the program today, I got an email from an organization, I won't mention their name, but they asked for donations in Bitcoin, and I can tell you, this is my pronouncement. Dr. Deagle says in February 6, 2014, Bitcoin is a beta test for the mark of the beast. And it doesn't matter if it was done overtly or covertly or whether it's tied to an agency. Uh, cryptocurrencies, whether they're backed by gold or just mined as using a mathematical formula, all cryptocurrencies are a beta test for the mark of the beast, which is a basically a cybernetic currency with security locks by the top agencies in the world, the no such agency or NSA, the Omega agency, which is conceived in the 20s and 30s by the Nazis, which is to oversee all secret agencies which are basically the incarnation of the latest version of all the high priesthoods of the ancient Atlantis, Mu, uh, Sumer, and Egypt that later were the kind of dynastic incarnations after the great destruction of the Younger Dryas period, uh, the passage of the comet that destroyed the planet, and all the other things that occurred. The great flood, which are remembered by the ancient mythology, such as the, the, uh, the uh, epic of, uh, of, of Gilgamesh, etc., uh, yeah, this, that used to be situation. one of my uh, 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 textbooks for a course I teach, uh, the Epic right. Yoga Mission. So, so what people need to understand is what's going on right now is absolutely cataclysmic and is being put forward by transdimensional demonic entities. And if people don't put that into the equation and put God in the equation, they're like bugs hitting the glass in the window. They'll never get out because the window's not open to them. Well, it, they don't it, understand it, it. It's playing the multi-level <laughs> space chess and having left out the top layer, the, app, the because that's the one in which, once you finally get to that level, you begin to understand what's really going on. Exactly. And, uh, uh, by the way, uh, a uh, U.S. Supreme Court justice, uh, uh, Antoine uh, or Tony uh, Scala, uh, Scala uh, excuse me. Sc- Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I, I've got a. Normally, you know, it's 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 very cold here in uh, southwestern Indiana, and uh, normally I drink iced tea. And I'm sitting back. My, my office is the coolest room in the house, and I've got a thrill over my shoulders. And I was drinking hot coffee, and I've ran out. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think what you have is you have a new world order caught in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you this. The so Justice Scalia, is my oh boy, uh, has said, uh, evidently just within the last day, that uh, he can foresee that uh, the United States uh, will once again imprison people in concentration camps uh, as they did in uh, in the nineteen early nineteen forties. Uh, now, is he doing? Is he saying this Japanese because he's American? Is he saying this because this is uh, Thursday and on Tuesday he was told by his doctor he has three months to live, and he knows he's going to soon meet his maker? Or is he saying because he's prophetically like a New World Order minion of Satan, telling us lay over sheep, don't worry, we're going to shear her off and we'll cut your neck nicely so you won't feel the things we bleed you out and hang you upside down before we fillet you and cut you up for 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 uh, mutton uh, chops and other things for meal. The fact is that I don't know where he's coming from, but the fact is he's speaking truth. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that this is uh, we're being attacked in so many ways. Russia, of all places, now is getting ready to ban all genetically modified food uh, in the country, and uh, several countries have done that. There have been some. Europe is. Uh, you can't get uh, GMO food in Europe. The Europeans are smart. They have labeling well, uh, rules there, uh, and by the way, it's going to happen here. Too. It'll happen here too. It'll start in. The, I'm not predicting. I, I think it'll start in Oregon. The Oregon people are the most you know, homogeneously environmentally solid. They are in California, but they're not as big proportionately. Oregon will do it, and once Oregon does it, it's going to kill the GM things. Now, large. I think it's a, one of the major food manufacturers here in America is totally going to remove GM. And and uh, you know, if if you look at what they did, I mean, they took uh, 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 DNA uh, to create sterility in in human beings, and they spiced it into corn crops. Uh, that, and that's just one tiny bit of. Uh, well, that's of the you're talking about the Mon eighty Mon eighty corn. They did a study in in Austria, which is why Mon eighty corn is not allowed in Europe, and it was actually banned in China. China that gives us melamine to kill our pets, which is a protein substitute. Mon 80 corn in Austria 
it has been proven to cause sterility. It causes sperm and spermatogenesis to stop. It causes disturbed uh, fetal development. It's unbelievable. And then we talk and about promoter the genes. The third generation is considerably worse than the first and second right, generation. Right. Well, what that means is basically GMO foods were introduced in the 90s primarily. And right now we're one generation in, which is like 2014. I predict that in a generation, which is 2034, 35, human beings won't be able to reproduce if we continue eating GM food. So populations like America will be converted to a unisexual drone class that will not be able to reproduce unless you submit your gametes, if you have any, to a laboratory certified to be able to do non-wild reproduction if you follow the edicts of the global elite. And they'll do genetic polar body exclusion of any fetus that has genes that could be considered troublemaker genes, i.e. you have a backbone and are willing to not say, no, I'm going to not bend over and take it. Uh, and that's what kind of population they want. Well, they want a population. That's the problem. The American mm. public has not yet developed that that tough of a backbone because they're killing us in multiple ways. They're destroying the middle class. I've got an article here. I well, I don't think there's toxic uh, physically or mentally yet. I think their toxicity is education. Uh, people basically are not yet completely we call lobotomized. They're we call educationally and spiritually lobotomized by gutless pastors that teach them what I call milk and cookie gospel without the real facts. They don't teach them what I call Delta Force uh, Christianity. We have school education systems that teach people to regurgitate like maggots rather than to have independent thought patterns and learn inductive and deductive logic. And you know as a professor, if you teach people how to think, it's like the old story of, you know, you can give a man a fish and you know, feed him for a day, you teach him how to fish and he's, he's independent. They don't want an independent public, so I've mentioned this before. Uh, yeah, going a lot to of people don't want to know how to think because it's scary. Well, they have to. In fact, it increases the danger to all of us if some of us don't and refuse to think. I consider it what a public danger when people have the dis, what I call dissatisfaction with thinking to the point where they actually would call viciously ignorant against us that ask questions because it's not okay to to just be a dummy. It's not okay. Being a dummy and being passive in this situation puts all of us at risk. Well, we're we're now so far into a, the corrupt destruction of America and the killing off of a large part of the the as the the globalists consider us to be unnecessary eaters, a large part of the world's population heading towards World War Three, heading towards we're in a depression, a global depression, but heading towards a total global collapse. We're well, so it's, it's far gonna, into this. It, it, if we uh, don't wake up, we're toast. Okay, uh, I'm a blood descendant of Moses, and of course, Moses, of course, it goes back to uh, Joseph. You talk about the house of Ephraim. And in my family, they were given a prophecy in the first century by Jesus, directly passed down to my uncle Michael, who died 25 years ago, that one of the family line would be a witness for the northern tribes called house of Ephraim. And I can pronounce this as that witness today, that we are in the final days of the secular age. That's why they talk about the novus order seclorum in Latin. It means toward the secular order of the age. Satan wants a continuous secular order of Satanism, and God says, no, your lease is over. Now, Satan's time is almost up. And Thank you, Tim. The solution is to kill us all. God Absolutely. Check out his blog. So we're moving right now, so it's going to happen this, this year or next. Things are really going to rock and roll. <clears throat> Welcome back, and... Uh, Tell me your circumstances, Chris. You just told me on the break that you have had power outage for two days. You just could manage to get back on the air. It's been gale force winds, horrible weather. Uh, what state are you in, and why is it so bad? We're up near uh, Pennsylvania and Delaware on that line. We just had some uh, pretty tough uh, well, weather. It's basically an ice storm, and it happens once yeah, in a while. Yeah. Well, one does, of the things that I pronounced back in... Trees. One of the things I pronounced back in 1999 and repeated about seven years ago is when you see ice storms that go all the way from Arkansas through to the East Coast, it's the time of the final years of judgment where God's going to start really bringing America under judgment. Those ice storms are a sign of what's called the portal or vortex. I mentioned in hour two the technical reasons behind these boom sounds last year and the sounds in 2012 and now returning this year of the trumpets that people hear around the world from Ukraine and Kiev to all 
all over the world from Canada, and I gave specific reasons why the plasma discharges from the very rapid transit of the magnetic north pole is causing changes in the world's plasma physics, which will cause major superquakes, volcanic eruptions, extreme weather, the polar vortexes we're heading into an ice age, and the collapse of the magnetosphere that will, during the daytime, make us wide open to radiation from cosmic background radiation, high energy ultraviolet light, and the collapse of crops, a major famine, as they say, I'm a descendant of, of Mo, not only Moses, but Joseph, and I'm speaking specifically about the time, the fat years and the lean years. The fat years are over. This is the lean year. This year is the first of the lean years, which means this year or next, they're probably going to sign the peace treaty. And the blood moons we discussed yesterday with Mark Biltz, I pronounced that we are so close now, we're not years away from the start of the final years of, of the time of Jacob's trouble. We are months now away. I'm not setting a date, but I can tell you the blood moons, either before this uh, Feast of Tabernacles or next next year, it's extremely likely that the peace treaty will be signed. And the day of the sanctification of the temple and the start of the blood sacrifice will be the abomination, which is a blood sacrifice that will desolate or remove Christians and Jews from parts of Israel where they have a right to be in the land. That is the abomination that desolates. And the only man who can declare the rebuilding of the temple by the scroll that was given to George Bush in January 2007, as per Tex Mars, which he proved to me the documents, is the U.S. president, not the president of Israel, not the president of Russia or anywhere else. It's the U.S. president, and the current person in the presidency is a Muslim, Satanist, bisexual, cocaine addict. So we're dealing with a situation now where we have an avatar hunk of human flesh that has had Reiki and mind control and an avatar by demonic entities directly controlled by Lucifer wrecking and trashing our nation with Obamacare, with innocent blood, doing nothing to stop Fukushima from poisoning every pregnant woman with a baby that's developing in utero, every senior that will get a cardiac arrhythmia or atrial fibrillation or a stroke caused by radionuclides accumulating in their system. We are in a time of abominations upon abominations. And the name even of Obama, as per Mark Belts, is even in Genesis. He's actually pulled out the name of Obama. And we're not just talking about the Bible code. So uh, I, w I want to take a helicopter view because you don't have time to prepare a specific report. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions uh, that will tie in with the, the say Jesus said there's only one truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and life. What he's saying is it doesn't matter if it's subatomic particle physics, medicine, genetics, astrophysics, geology, uh, electrophysiology, quantum, Higgs field, you know, headline, hadron collider. There is only one truth. There's only one source of good, and that's the Creator God. There's only one source of wisdom, and that's God. And the fact is the truth will set you free, but you need the whole truth. That's why I tell people they need to be holy, which is they don't want to forget the W. That's W-H-O-L. You have to wholly give yourself to God, wholly seek the truth, or you will be sent a strong delusion, which is the coming mark. Uh, and the uh, eugenics to kill much of the population of Earth is their religion. So, uh, Chris... How likely do you think it is that we're going to have a massive radiation release from Fukushima for one or another reason this year? We're going to have, uh, I think it's likely, and here's a, there's a couple of reasons why. One of them is that they're running out of room in the tanks that are holding the highly radioactive water. They have to make room for it. So I know that destroying the groundwater that's coming, uh, that's clean air. That's of course. Uh, that's clean, uh, I like the er part. Yeah, uh, clean er. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it's not. It's not like a, yeah, like fifteen quad, uh, not fifteen quadrillion becquerels uh, per cubic meter. It's you know maybe ten. You know. <laughs> they're storing that. You know, but eventually they got to make room for the the nastier material that's coming out. Also, and they don't. You know, basically they just can't keep on building more tanks. So some of that's going to have to be released. And I, I do see that they're discussing a release today. You know, I don't. I don't have all the particulars. Of it. I, I, I have a technical question. Have you ever heard of a, product, of a material called starlight? Starlight. Starlight. S T A R L I T E. Starlight. Okay. It's a stable material that can withdraw and withstand nuclear uh, nuclear uh, bombardment from a radioisotope. Can't be broken down. Uh, will not melt even at fourteen thousand degrees. Uh, is the strongest material known to man that can synthetically be made. I talked to Dr. Ron Klatz, who's the head of A4M, the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, very brilliant, multidimensional thinker, and he introduced me to talk about the starlight several months ago. 
And uh, here's the technical things that I think, and I'm going to repeat them so that somebody listening out there knows, there are solutions, if you use imagination, that can be done. The first thing you want to do is use remotely controlled tunneling machines, and the U.S. military has these. Uh, they're run mainly by some of the large corporations, like Bechdel Corporation. And we're not talking about the tunneling machines like made the English Channel. We're talking about uh, sodium-cooled, nuclear reactor-driven uh, tunneling machines that hit with impact lasers and turn to an obs- uh, into dust the forward uh, impact zone of the tunneling. It's so blowed on the side channels to create an obsidian-like zero-debris core, and they can lay down tracks and fiber optic cable as it moves forward at a distances up to 14 uh, kilometers per day. Uh, the fact is that these are now up to 120 feet across. Uh, these tunnels are can be they're huge. They used to be around 80. Uh, they're, they they could create tunnels and then literally lay starlight and create a corium catcher underneath the area. There are several ways of identifying where the corium is. Ground penetrating radar and what's called muon muon shadows, which we talked about last time, because basically uh, the muon shadows pick up the shadow where muons, which will travel right through the earth, uh, do not transit across radioisotope. Uh, corium, and so you'll see a shadow where the corium exists. You can triangulate exactly how deep and exactly the location. Uh, the key issue is that we need to, the two enemies are neutrons, which we need to stop with a crystalline sarcophagus and water molecules. So they had, should have had a diversion project started three years ago to divert the aquifer away from the area. They should have created a corium catcher. They should have had basically uh, spider silk Kevlar tents over each of those nuclear reactor sites. They should have stopped trying to put human beings in there like the kamikaze Yakuza that are sent in there to die. Uh, and our untrained individuals now pulling out the easy fuel rod assembly pellets. When they get to the bad stuff, they're going to have an accident. And if there's a major corium-induced uh, nuclear criticality, we're going to get much more heavier isotopes or nuclear explosion, which will send debris many kilometers. The biggest problem, though, is what's called tritiated uh, steam venting, which creates tritiated steam vents that can go for miles out to the ocean floor or back into the Honshu that can enter into cracks in the rocks that carried all the way back to the uh, subway station systems of northern Tokyo. Uh, they needed to... Um, immediately realize that you have to stop these what's called spontaneous uh, uh, plutonium activated uh, neutrons because that's why plutonium is a fantastic detonator for nuclear weapons because it spontaneously releases without compressing the core with a krytron switch plastic explosives or high explosive laser which are the newer definitions of ways that they compress the uh, nuclear material to cause a, a, a critical reaction and a chain reaction is to use high energy lasers and high energy capacitors rather than to use explosives like Krytron switches and plastique. Uh, those are ancient technologies compared to the micronukes that have been developed for the U.S. Army Corps engineers. And we have energy technologies now to make the amount of energy of these micronukes completely either X rays, neutrons, or whatever. That's why we talk about the neutron bomb where 98% of the energy. So uh, there are technical solutions to the problem. There's no attempt to solve any of these problems because the agenda is omnicide, which is to kill planet Earth and every human being on it. That's what we're facing. And anybody who wants to dispute that, come into my lair, I say, Dr. Deagle, 800-259-5791, and I'm going to give you an intellectual whooping. <clears throat> Welcome back. Um, one of the grave dangers is we've learned a lesson from Fukushima that nuclear war and older style nuclear reactors are obsolete. Uh, also, the fact that we have debris sitting on 50 to 60 year old debris, giant debris of nuclear materials, either liquid or solid, in these casks is dangerous and stupid. And we're supporting policies by Saudi Arabia and Iran not only to attack Syria, but to guarantee that an attack by Israel and Saudi Arabia on Iran means a direct bunker buster nuke hitting multiple reactors at Bashir that will make the Fukushima disaster look like party. And the fact is we've actually tracked and I've talked to scientists from medical doctors and scientists for social responsibility, which I belong to for decades, almost four decades, that if they hit the Bashir reactor, the radiation cloud, 
will cross southern Asia. It'll cross Malaysia and uh, Indonesia and Myanmar. It'll cross China and just blast the hell out of them. The largest population, one quarter of all humanity, will get massive radiation exposure if we strike Bashir. So the Chinese, have, as they say in, in poker, they've got skin in the game. In other words, if we hit Bashir, bye-bye Myanmar, bye-bye Malaysia, and bye-bye China. See you later, guys. You're done. So people didn't understand the 22 provinces in China, which is cyclonic currents that carry the radiation backwards from east to west over China. 22 provinces within three weeks declared radiation levels as much as six times or more background over China. And the Chinese basically kind of gulped it up because they knew this was kind of temporary when it really couldn't took off initially. But the whole northern hemisphere is being irradiated. These clouds don't just stop once and pass around the continents once. When they get in the upper atmosphere, they keep on whizzing around and whizzing around. So the radioisotopes from the above ground nuclear testing in the 50s and 60s are still in the upper atmosphere from not only the northern hemisphere, but the southern hemisphere of the plutonium bombs blown up in the 30s before the Manhattan Project in the 40s with the Manhattan Project of the Bikini Atoll. So uh, the question is, uh, Chris, what do you think of these maniacs? Because if there isn't a peace treaty, there's almost certainly going to be bunker buster bombs hit Bashir. What do you think the consequences will be? Uh, I think the consequences are going to be a lot of airborne radiation, including hot particles. And... Uh, Especially if they have a direct strike on, on the reactor itself. And, like, and I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you something else that'll happen. happen. The, the yeah. largest deposit outside of Kazakhstan uh, and uh, the Russian strategic rocket forces that are in, in, in basically the uh, uh, their Kamentov mountain system, etc., is in the, in the Negev Desert at Demona. And uh, I can guarantee you this as my internal sources that uh, the Russians and the, uh, and the Iranians will target with either conventional and or nuclear weapons the uh, storage of nuclear weapons and nuclear materials at the Demona reactor site. Which means if you want to really blow a nation apart, you don't have to hit the cities, you just have to hit the reactors. And we know the GPS coordinates down to a cubic meter, so the idea that these idiots in Israel think that there's a survivable war with Russia, uh, because Russia said yet to Israel and Saudi Arabia attacking Iran, and they just don't get it. They think that the Iron Dome system and the, and the Green Pine radar system is going to protect them, and they are delusional. Uh, they also think that America's plasma system of upper atmospheric radiation detection and vaporization of guidance systems will stop it. And I talked to the guys at the Strategic Rocket Forces that work at the White Sands Missile Base and also Vandenberg, so I know all the technical details more than anybody else that talks on this network or anywhere else. Specifically, with high-level cure level clearance and a photographic memory, I can tell you that any kind of war started by anybody will end up in devastated omnicide for everyone. War is not survivable, period. And if we start a proxy war with these nations, so what do you think will happen? First off, they're going to counter-strike and strike the Bundamona reactor, so the entire Middle East and the entire supply of oil in the Middle East will be radioactive, and many millions of people will die. Uh, the radiation will devastate all of Asia and uh, southern Russia. Uh, we will see a level of death of humanity, and not only of, across the the living things there, but the amount of radioisotopes and materials will dissolve the remaining fragments of the ozone layer and any remaining forests or phytoplankton will disappear. That means the oxygen concentration is going to significantly drop and human beings, if they don't escape into domed cities with filtration systems, they're going to die. And uh, I see within six months if this happens, 90% of the world population will be gone and uh, the few left will be limping along living in underground hotels with filtration systems, hoping that the world above, which is now turned to a dead cinder, will eventually someday produce life, and they're delusional. Uh, they won't be down there like 80,000 years like the time machine, the Morlocks. Uh, it will be irreparable. The Earth will become a dead zone, with only chemobacteria at the bottom of the Marianas Trench surviving. That's what will happen. Certainly, uh creating a huge dirty bomb in, and uh, the Bushu reactor. We still don't have a lot of spent fuel on it. I mean, that would be the good news, but still, basically, you know, the yeah, in other words, we will contain the building and 
Yeah, in other words, what I'm saying is Fukushima is the bad news. The really bad news is hitting Bashir. And the catastrophic news is these maniacs want to start a thermonuclear exchange that will wipe out most of humanity. And their survivors, as I said, the living will envy the dead. That's how bad it will be. That would be... Well, that's a good way to go ahead and render a whole lot of land mass uninhabitable. Yes, well, it's satanic. I mean, I mean, people will argue with me and don't want to bring in the spiritual component of this, but I speak as a scientist, as a doctor, as a radio toxicologist, and I speak uh, with authority as a prophet and apostle. And I tell people, God is bringing this knowledge together in one individual to try to tell people before the time of the end, we're there. We're not years away from disaster. We're months. We're there within months of economic chaos. We're there within months of biometric ID. We're there within months of a peace treaty or a thermonuclear war. We're there within months of them determining that they're going to do a, a preemptive strike against Iran before they, quote, have the bomb. This is how crazy it is. So if Fukushima is bad and the falling of the cooling pools is bad, hitting Bashir is even worse. And the danger is an attack on Bashir means there's going to be a, a thermonuclear attack against Demona. And Demona has the largest supply of nuclear materials outside of Japan. The first is America and Russia. The second. The third is Japan, believe it or not, not, not Israel. And the fourth is Israel. Japan has been working in alliances for decades creating high-grade plutonium detonators for Israeli weapon systems. And every Muslim city within 10,000 miles will be turned to obsidian glass and the people turned to a, a v atomic vapor. With the screams of people calling out to Allah, their god of the moon war god of Satan, as a last whimper is seeing their population vaporize into a cloud of dust. That's where we're going. And many of these people were ancient Hebrews put to the scimitar, and if they, didn't, if they succumbed, uh, they were put to death, and if they didn't, then they turned to Islam. So 87% of the people in the, in the occupied territories in Gaza that call themselves Palestinians, they're ancient Hebrews. 87% have Hebrew genes. They were literally put to the scimitar by the satanic religion of Islam, which that's why Solomon Rushdie talked about the satanic letters, because he's referring to the fact that there's actual dialogue in the surahs with Muhammad hearing the dialogue in the so-called spirit between whether or not he was actually avataring or receiving signals or words directly from the creator god he called Allah, which is the moon moored god of Mecca and Medina, or Lucifer Satan, which he had a clear idea of. And he actually said he didn't know. But he said to believe the later words of the, of the uh, scriptures, they call it, of the holy book of Allah, the, you know, the Quran, uh, rather than the first ones that talk about peace. So in other words, you know, peace, shmish. If I say chop their heads off, do the chopping part. What do you think of that, Chris? Yeah, that, um, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so people that are listening to this, by the way, we're now on hot bird out of uh, covering Great Britain, Eastern and Western Europe, China, Russia, and the Middle East. Take notice. You Muslims out there, Yeshua HaMashiach is the father in the flesh, and it says in the Second Chronicles, which true Hebrews revere, not the Zohar, not the Talmudic uh, Babylon, which is satanic, or satanic Quran. The fact is that our God is God, and he's coming back because he said, I shall cut these days short, lest no flesh survive. I say this and pronounce this as a real prophet, not a false one like Muhammad. I say this to you out there in Islam, out there in Israel, heed the words. The peace treaty is coming as a false peace. They will try to have a dialectic with this insane black pope to say that it's time for mullahs and for imams to lay down and with the with the Vatican priests, prelates, bishops, and cardinals with so-called Christian ministries and to say we're all parts of the Abrahamic faith. Lies, deception, and Satanism, I say. And only one God is a simple God. The God wants our love and our attention. And the only source of good is to hear and do his will to Shema. And those people who are blood Hebrews, rise up and throw off the shackles of Islam. You who are Christians and are silent, open your mouth. Clean out the filth that's in it. Accept the truth. Repent now.